Welcome, everyone. Good to see um, most of you. Thanks for, for flipping on your, uh, your screens here. Um, welcome to, is this preceptorial day two? It's, it's NSO day two. Raise your hand if this is your first preceptorial uh, during NSO. <laughs> Okay, so some of you are already pros. Okay, well, this one's going to be um, a little bit different. Uh, we we think you might find it to be a bit different, and uh, I'll, we'll explain why in a moment. But first, uh, if I could introduce myself, my name is, my name Dr. is Dr. Daniel Shields, and I sometimes have an echo. Uh, <laughs> some of you may hear. Um, I teach in the history department here in areas of, of Renaissance and Reformation. I direct a program for research on religion and urban civil society we call PRUX. And I also direct the Collegium Institute, uh, which is the organizer of this preceptorial. Um, and as some of you may have seen, uh, the Collegium Institute is an academic community here at Penn where students and faculty of various faiths or none uh, form friendships while exploring the, what we call the, the great Catholic or in the Greek uh, universal questions that, that animate every human life. Like for instance, what, what is an education? Um, and so, we invite you, welcome you to participate in this conversation with us. And um, to do that, we're going to invite you all to introduce yourselves in the uh, briefest, uh, but, but I think interesting ways uh, that are designated there in the chat box. Uh, but before you do that, I would just like to introduce our uh, special guest and faculty co-leader for this conversation, Professor Ralph Rosen of the Department of Classical Studies. He has a, uh, a very um, eminent title uh, in front of his name, the, the Vartan Gregorian Professor of the Humanities, uh, but he is uh, very humble, and so uh, you may not hear all of that as he introduces himself. So. Uh, Professor Rosen. Great Hi, everybody. Hey, it, I'm over here on the on the screen. Um, it's really great to be here again. Uh, thanks, Dan, for inviting me. It's great to, great to see so many faces this time. I guess that's the one slight upside to Zoom is we can have a sl slip a couple more people in rather than in a room with limited chairs. But anyway, really happy to be here to talk about Socrates and, and uh, about the relationship between these texts and your education that you're about to begin here at Penn. Um, I, as Dan said, I am um, a professor in the Department of Classical Studies, uh, where we do basically, we study anything that has to do with Mediterranean antiquity. Let's put it that way. Greek, Latin, ancient history, archaeology, anything, and anything that's sort of before the Middle Ages has to do with the Mediterranean in literature, philosophy, material culture, and importantly, it's reception all the way up through today. So it's a long, long line continuum of, of studies and with many fascinating byways. We won't go into that now, um, but that's about it. The other thing is I'm faculty director of Reby College House in the Quad, so uh, I know none of you are in the houses yet, uh, but maybe in the spring I'll see some of you if you've been assigned to Reapy or other houses in the quad. We'll leave it at that. Okay. And and on his own screen, he's he's bridging uh, antiquity. And oh the, yeah, uh, you're you're calling in from Delos. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm calling in from the quad, but um, <laughs> yes, it's, I'm imagining and would like to be. Uh, where this this picture was taken in the island of Delos on the Aegean. Okay, well, thank you for joining us, Professor Rosen. This preceptorial is meant to be very interactive, in which you, uh, I, maybe the more difficult part for this preceptorial is not um, 
an imagining encounter with Socrates, but an imagining encounter with Locust Walk, right? Uh, as you see uh, before you here. Um, but uh, someday, uh, you know, we hope that we'll all be uh, crossing paths on this path um, again, and uh, the sort of the main crossroads through campus. And say you um, encounter this fellow on the right uh, in, in stone, um, and you know, who's not uh, wearing much clothing and um, asks you what, not, you don't ask him what he's doing here, he asks you what you're doing here, right? Um, what are you trying to get out of these next four years at Penn? And uh, let's say you don't have a ready answer for him. And so he responds as is his want in the form of a series of questions, right? Which um, we have kind of uh, reproduced in the form of some uh, some of his di some of Plato's dialogues um, that we'll engage with together. So for for a little bit of an introduction to the Platonic dialogues and to Socrates, I'll, I'll turn things over. Uh, to uh, my uh, friend and colleague here, Professor Rosen. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, so first of all, look at all these people. It's great. Um, how many of you, uh, just by putting your hands up, you don't have to do it on the, in the Zoom thing, just curious, how many of you have had an encounter with Socrates before in any of your classes or your studies? Is, is he a familiar figure? Yeah, so and and so you probably read a little bit of Plato in in so probably the Republic. Yes, who's read any of Plato's Republic, or the Apology, or the Crito, any of the anyway? Okay, yeah. So there's a little. Who has never ever ever encountered Socrates before this minute? Anybody? Okay, that's good. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah, so three or four of you. Um, anyway, um, all I want to say, there's plenty to, to say about him and Plato, but just to situate it in like one sentence, historically, we're talking about um, a period that's uh, from the 5th and the 4th century BCE. So uh, in classical, what's called classical, that word is under contention these days, but we're not going to get into that. But in what's traditionally called classical Athens in Greece, um, and, uh, you know, it's generally thought that in Western philosophy that Socrates and Plato are kind of the quote unquote beginning. I mean, there was Socrates, there was philosophy before them as well, but not much has survived that's actually, you know, written out in, in, in a substantial text. So um, what we're reading here, these passages are written by Plato who was a follower of Socrates. I wouldn't say he's a student because Socrates would deny to his dying day that he was a teacher as such in a formal sense. And in fact, he has problems with the people in classical Athens who were regarded as teachers, the sophists. We're gonna see that in our first um, reading, which we're gonna to do together in the Protagoras. So, so Plato, is the one responsible for writing down these fictionalized, but kind of based on history, uh, based on his relationship with Socrates, writing down these dialogues, philosophical di dialogues, recounting conversations that Socrates would have kind of in the streets of Athens or in just among his, the people he met in Athens about usually ethical issues. So he was, Socrates was primarily concerned with uh, what happiness is, what virtue is, how we should behave among each, with each other. And then that'll get you into questions of how do you become a virtuous person? Well, you need a certain kind of training or education or discipline. And that is a kind of preamble to the kinds of questions that come up in, in these dialogues here. Um, I, I, the only the last thing I'll say, because I don't, you know, we have plenty to talk about together. The last thing I'll say is that when you see the word sophist in the first reading from the Protagoras, substitute in your mind um, pen professor or 
just professor. Now it's a crude analogy and it, you know, sophistry has become a bad word in the English language and many other languages um, because Socrates had so much antagonism against sophist, sophists. So it's not to say that professors are gonna be like Greek sophists, except to say that sophist for Socrates was someone who was regarded as a professional teacher like a professor today. So there are, you know, there are some analogies, but um, it's not one to one. Sometimes with the bad word of sophist, I hate to say it, but people will analogize a lawyer, a modern day lawyer to a sophist, but that's for another conversation. Okay, I better stop there, Dan, because there's plenty that's more to say. That's great. That's great. Well, let, let's let that lead us, you know, right into uh, Socrates' first line of question. Question here is represented by Plato, um, and it's taken from the dialogue uh, called the Protagoras. And um, uh, Professor Rosen will guide us in a conversation about that. But if we could, how about we? Um, Emmy, is it possible to uh, share the screen? of this yeah. dialogue. And um, would anyone like to uh, to begin reading this for us? Um, and uh, and we, we can sort of uh, take turns. It's a little bit harder to, to coordinate this uh, by, by Zoom, but um, uh, I think, you know, Emmy seems to be sort of pulling all the strings really well here, um, more than I can see. So, is anyone volunteering to to get us to get There's us started a, here? Meg is volunteered. Oh, Meg. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Meg. Uh, all right, the the protagonist. Well, do you realize you're about to let the man take care of your soul? A sophist, you say, but what is a sophist? Think, he said, that a sophist, as the name implies, is someone who has sophisticated knowledge. All right, but isn't that something we can say about carpenters as well, or painters? We could say they have sophisticated knowledge too, but if someone asks us in what area, what is a painter's sophisticated knowledge directed at? We could say that it is directed at creating images, but what if someone asked, so what about a sophist? What's, the sophisticated no what's his sophisticated knowledge directed at? What could we say? What does a sophist produce? What is he master of? I'm Meg, not sure. Oh, sorry, sorry. Meg, thank you. Thank you for, for getting us started on that. I didn't mean to cut you off there because I think you were really building momentum. Uh, that was great. Um, can we uh, can we get another uh, voice? Uh, Julia? Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> I'm not sure what we'd say, Socrates, unless we'd say he's a master of making people skilled at speaking. That may well be right, I said, but it certainly isn't a full answer because it raised the further question. What does a sophist make people skilled at speaking about? Well, damn, you've got me there. I just don't know. <laughs> Do you realize the kind of danger you'll be placing your soul in? I bet that if it was your body you had to hand over to someone and you were taking a chance on its ending up in good or bad shape, you'd have thought really carefully about whether or not to go ahead with it. But here's a question of something more precious to you than your body, your soul, the thing that determines by turning out either good or bad whether your whole life goes well or badly. Excellent reading. Thank you, Julia, Meg. Great. What do we That's do good. here? So, uh, should I should Please. I take, get things going, Dan? That would be wonderful. Okay, good. So, um, uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna. Can can we take this down for the moment, Emmy? Just so I can see people. Yeah, sorry, it feels a little more intimate if I can see everybody. Um, okay, so in case it wasn't obvious, this 
this passage <laughs> is it kind of gets to the foundation, the most fundamental issues about, you know, becoming educated and going, you know, going for any kind of training. And it's classic, it's a classic set of questions that I suspect you've probably all asked yourselves, maybe even directly or indirectly, which is simply, okay, so why am I applying to Penn in particular or places like Penn? Why am A, why am I even applying to any kind of college? What am I expecting to get out of it? I'm going to put my my well you know the language here is my soul but really just kind of my 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 well-being my i don't even know what what's a better word for soul my 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 self <laughs> it, soul is fine shorthand i'm going to put my soul in the care of a bunch of professors for four years and at great expense so what am I gonna, what am I expecting to get out of that? And sub question there, and then I'll stop, of course, is the classic one, and especially at Penn, which has its history, a long history of pre-professionalism. Uh, so are, am I expecting to get trained in a specific thing, like putting myself under the tutelage of, what are his examples, a carpenter or a painter, substitute whatever you want there but is there a specific craft that i want a practical knowledge of so when i get out i will know really well how to do that or i mean you see where socrates is heading is that kind of limited and you know even you know well skilled at speaking that's what socrates hated because it, for him it meant training unscrupulous lawyers uh, the equivalent of that, but is it something more? Is it, you know, the whole soul, the whole shape of who we are? Is it a training that's kind of more indirect and not direct and where you can't map on a skill or a career right after? Classic questions. So any thoughts about this in terms of what you've come to Penn to expect, what you think is the right way to approach education, and and I I wanted as a footnote to that, um, particularly in this day and age when college education is so expensive, it's you know it's it's understandable why, let's say a parent or whoever is is paying for it, uh, would be very concerned about the outcome, quote unquote, the outcomes at the end, and. You know, I can say as a humanist, say it's really important for you to know some history and philosophy and literature, as well as whatever quote unquote practical things you're doing. It's, I can say that, but somebody who says, well, wait, where's, what's that actually going to get me after all this expense? It's a harder question to answer. And I think that this is this is actually framed kind of perfectly by Socrates. Um, and so I think it's something to think. I mean, that's a tall order, right? Um, but it's, a, I think, a little bit of a helpful way to sort of bring us to conclusion in the way we think of um, sort of this program and the uh, the types of intellectual communities that are sort of formed um, together with with collegium about the way in which education is not simply sort of something that's received right but something that is done right sort of we do together right with each other um, and uh, you know take sort of responsibility for each other and in a sort of um, shared commitment that you know we're all um, trying to seek what's right, right, and um, and and pursue things seriously. So, um, you know, with that, I think um, just before we uh, formally conclude, I just is there anything else coming up? Um, you know, friends at, at Collegium that um, that those of us who are here might be interested in knowing about for conversations like this. Um, Jess or, or Emmy, uh, we, we have an open house coming up, is that right? Yes, we do. Um, and I will send everyone that attended this preceptorial the details about it, but um, 
our open house is coming up on September 3rd in the evening. It'll be virtual, of course. Uh, it's just going to be a chance to learn more about Collegium, hear about some of our programs, get connected with the community. Um, and I would highly encourage you to come. You can come for five minutes or for the whole hour. It's 7 to 8, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, <clears throat> or just drop in for a couple minutes. Uh, and another program we have coming up that uh, might be interesting to some people would be Food for Thought, which is a weekly discussion group with uh, very short readings. And our first theme this semester is um, friendship in the polis, or the Greek word for city. So uh, friendship and its role in civic engagement. Um, somebody in the chat, Shane says, is there anything we could register for to join or learn more? Absolutely. Um, so I'll send a follow-up email. Um, to everyone that came to this Zoom session, and you can, and I'll give you an option to join our listserv so you get regular updates. But for anyone interested in learning more about Collegium, the um, best thing I could say you do right now would be to come to our open house on September third. Well, yeah, and like Emmy said, it, um, also if you can't make it to the open house because you have some other commitment during that time, um, we will reach out with ways to kind of stay in touch um, about what's going on. So we have all kinds of student programming, like food for thought. But we also host a bunch of really interesting lectures. Um, and actually, one of the unexpected um, side effects of the coronavirus and the being virtual is that we can get professors like that we might not get otherwise, like from around the world. Um, so our first big one is called Humanities for, hum for the Human Humanities for Humanity um, towards an ethic of civic engagement and a culture of encounter. So we'll be looking at the sort of idea of the humanities and how they help us engage um, civically, but also just a life well lived with professors from a bunch of different fields. Um, so that'll be another really great event in September, um, on September 10th in the evening. So. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jess. Uh, thank you, Emmy. Um, and thank you to uh, Terrence uh, for leading a, another uh, breakout group. Um, and, and Joe and uh, for uh, helping me. Uh, and also, uh, especially to um, our, our guest, Professor Ralph Rosen. Uh, thank you for uh, all that you do and um, and all that you sort of show us about uh, you know, the purpose of an education, not just by leading these com kinds of conversations, but you know the way that you engage in the university and, and the faculty house system and so forth. It's a, a model for us. So thank you. More than welcome. I hope to see all of you somewhere along the line in your four years here. And, uh, and just to conclude, I'd like to thank all of you uh, who, um, not just because you persevered until 1240, you're right though, that's an achievement, <laughs> uh, but uh, for all your um, really thoughtful and insightful contributions throughout this conversation, right, this has been really one of the most popular uh, preceptorials for I think you know, five years standing now, um, but each time, uh, we we get something different, um, and 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 certainly got something something different um, from you all this time. Something new for uh, for me to think about myself, and I thank you for that. And I look forward to um, engaging with you all if you're interested in further conversations along these lines. So thanks and enjoy okay. the rest of NSO. See you all. <laughs>